Hi there, my name is Isaac Oster, and in this tutorial series we're going to talk about converting this uh, high-poly ZBrush file into a GameRes asset. You see it's got 97 subtools, and it's uh, got some, some various moving pieces here that will need to be taken into consideration. This will be the third in my hard surface ZBrush series. The first one you can find on YouTube right about here. It's called Hard Surface Modeling with ZBrush. So part one is going to cover various uh, tools and workflows and then part two is going to be the modeling demonstration of this asset and it uh, takes it almost to this point but not quite but there's some everything that I've done in the meantime uh, between the end of that tutorial series and this video is uh, covered in the video so there's there shouldn't be too many too many surprises here so what we're going to do initially is we're going to think about which pieces need to be retopologized individually. Uh, that is to say, which pieces are going to be moving uh, in a hypothetical rigged scenario independently, and which which pieces are not. So right now I've got pretty much everything that is not part of the main body dropped down to the bottom of my stack here in my subtool menu. And the, the, the way that you can do that is you just grab whatever the subtool is, and uh, you can do that either here in the subtool menu, which can be very challenging if you've got a lot of little stuff like this, or you can just uh, hold Alt and click here in the workspace. And then once you've got it highlighted, you can hold Shift and click this little arrow here and it'll drop it to the bottom of the stack. And that's just an easy way to quickly organize stuff that might need to be turned off in terms of the visibility. So and th that's not super important. It just makes it a little bit easier for us to do our retop work. Actually, I guess in this case, it is pretty important. So let's just go ahead and, and uh, toggle the visibility here for our various assets. And I don't remember, let's see where I, started. I think this is probably actually the first piece here that's not going to include. So there you can see, yes, that is not part of the body. So I'm just going to go through and again, I already dropped all this to the bottom of the stack. So you guys don't have to sit through that, but you, I, I guess you do have to sit through this part of it. But the idea is I'm going to hide everything that's not going to be included in this, in this uh, section here. I guess I need to grab these little pieces here. So just hold Alt click, hold Shift, and then I can turn the eyeball off. And then as I grab the next subtool, the uh, visibility will toggle off for those pieces there. And then if I just select something else, you can see now we have just the main body. And uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and hide the pipe things as well because the pipes are, they have a, a negative space underneath them and they're very close together. So that would be a gigantic pain to, uh, to try to retop as part of this larger thing, unless I wanted to go right over the top of it, but it's kind of a big feature. So I think I'll just treat those as separate objects and we'll take those guys. And then these, these little, these little engine things, it's debatable about whether to, to include these. And actually the position isn't quite right. This is another reason I, I, I um, I'm not sure if I've talked about this yet, but I really like doing my retop here in ZBrush as opposed to exporting everything into some other uh, application like Quadra on Maya. Even though the tool might be a little more sophisticated in Maya, it's not unusual as you're going over your geometry to find little scenarios like this here where I would want to go in and, and do a little cleanup on the high poly just on the fly. So rather than having to like manage two different groups of, of uh, files, one inside Maya and one inside ZBrush, I can just do everything here in ZBrush. So that's my preference. And that's how I'm going to do it. And yeah, I think for these, I will, I may need to do a little bit of work to make sure that I have, uh, you know, the intersections here don't look too kind of ham-fisted. In this case, I think I might just come in here and make a little adjustment. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this kind of stuff. Doesn't look like I've even got the geometry there to support it. As you can see, it's it's looking pretty thin, so I may just have to do an inset and push that in a bit. Anyway, this is not a modeling tutorial, so I'm, I'm probably going to take care of that offline. But the, um, the main point here is none of this stuff is intended to move, at least not significantly independently. I mean, maybe you could have like an overall uh, bend or something that uh, affected everything. And if, I, if for some reason I did need it to be independent, then I could go in here and maybe think about just reusing each of these, the input geo here as the as the retop or, or some version of it the problem with that is you end up with a lot of internal faces that will probably never be rendered so it's just an extra like a, a lot of extra geometry again if you need that feature then it's good to go and that's one of the the perks of of using my uh, my approach 
uh, for creating this high poly geo in the first place. But yeah, it's in this case, I'm just going to do everything as one piece. And then we will take a look at some of the other uh, individual pieces like the legs and the wings. The wings are going to be a special case. And, and I want to make sure that if anybody is, is unfamiliar with, with how to work with transparency in Painter, that you pay special attention to that section. It's not very difficult. It's just one of those things. It's got a little bit of a different workflow. So now that I've got my high poly set up the way that I would like to begin the retop, what I'm going to do is I may have a Z sphere in here somewhere. There we go. So I'm just going to reuse this Z-Sphere. This is the one that I used to create all this geometry with. And these settings still still uh, need to be the same. So our Dynamesh resolution is set to 0, and our density is set to 1. And if you don't have this UI, I'll try to remember to, to make it available in the description. That stuff just lives here. So there's our density and adaptive skin, and here's Dynamesh resolution. And that stuff is only available if you've got a Z-Sphere selected. So, and for these little blaster things, well, I'll just, um, I'm going to hold off on this area. I'm actually only going to do a little bit of a demonstration on this because it's pretty repetitive. And if you've watched the other tutorials, then you'll know exactly what's going on. But there's one sort of important distinction here. I'm just going to make this a little easier to see, see this retop. So before, I needed to make sure that my low poly geo had creasing and edges and all this stuff kind of set up to give me the surface features that I was looking for. But in this case, I'm just doing kind of a classic retop. So my primary motivation here is to make sure I have a center line and to make sure my poly count doesn't get out of hand uh, and to make sure that I essentially just capture the silhouette without going too crazy with the, some of the details. So this will be a little bit of a, an experimental thing. It always is uh, initially as you're sort of finding the right density and kind of all the rest of it. But this is obviously an illegal face. So I'm going to go ahead and, and triangulate that. One of the things that's, that's uh, important to keep in mind as you're contemplating the use of triangles in your retop is it's, it's a little bit safer to do it on geometry that isn't going to deform. And by deform, I mean it's not going to animate in kind of a smooth bind kind of way like a, you know, an arm or an elbow might. This is going to be rigid. So we're not going to have strange deformations that are, that are unpredictable or, or ugly or whatever because we're using triangles. And if we didn't use triangles, because this geometry is so crazy, it, it, we would just end up with a really, really dense mesh and probably something that would be hard to work with. So what I was just looking at there is you see how my edge here is going underneath the surface. That's too much of a change. Like I don't really want there to be any geometry from my low poly that is significantly above or below the high poly. So I just decided to kind of scoot this back. So we're getting a little bit of a, of a more even... Uh, distribution there and then yeah that should be fine and now we can kind of come over here and do this kind of thing so what I was talking about earlier where it'll there's gonna need to be a little bit of um, exploration is there's all these little canyons and ridges and inset areas and the rule of thumb is basically like if it doesn't break the silhouette then you don't need to include it in the low poly but some of these things uh, there, the difference is significant enough that you might actually end up with, with uh, errors in the bake. So I will probably go a little denser than I need to just to make sure I don't run into any of those kinds of problems. So I'm going to use my move tool and just scoot things around and try to maybe capture some of those deeper canyons, especially when it is uh, something that breaks the silhouette from, say, the front view or something, which, yeah, that probably would. And also anything on the face is it's worth spending a, a little bit more in terms of your poly budget on areas that are more important for you know for whatever the character or the or the, or the, the player uh, is going to be expecting so like in this case i could be so let's say i've got a limited poly budget i could spend it up here where you're going to be looking all the time or i could spend it back there where maybe you never look i don't know or maybe it's some kind of a game where you like ride on the top of this thing and you would need to spend your polys up here, right? Like wherever, wherever you're getting the most engagement from your player, 
that's kind of where you want to be spending your budget. So anyway, this is just the beginning. I'll do a little bit more before jumping into the, the full the full retop and, and the, the speed recording, uh, just to kind of continue talking through some additional uh, tips and tricks to getting a nice clean retop as quickly as possible.